Yeah. Yeah, good day folks, it's Ash here from Glass Fusing. Just a quick one today to run through the different types of Bartlett controllers that we've got available and how to change the basic settings and put into a simple firing schedule. First question a lot of people have is when they get it, it's uh, set to Fahrenheit and they'd like it to be on Celsius. So there are two different ways depending on the model, even though they'll both say Model 3K. Try one way, and if it doesn't work, give it a shot the other way. For this particular model, we press and hold the, uh, the start, stop, enter button, and then we turn the power on. We hold it till it says edit, and we let go. We then press enter again, and it comes up with either C or F. Uh, C for Celsius, F for Fahrenheit, that one's reasonably easy. Once you've made your choice and you're happy with it, press the enter button. That's your theoretical maximum. It'll go to a stop, back to idle, and displaying the current temperature. This one's still a little bit hot because, well, the kiln was running a few minutes ago. Uh, it'll cool down during the display. Uh, now, the next one we'll do is just a basic firing schedule. If I can find... Alrighty, so because we just had the... Uh, we've got this controller down where we don't usually have it. We just had a thermocouple fail, thanks to this wire moving about a lot. So we'll start running through the, uh, the firing guide again. Again, this is going to be a, uh, a six-segment firing taken directly off the Spectrum website. When you've just plugged it in, it'll be flashing idle and a number, which is your current temperature. We want to press enter. We're going to program up user one, and it's got six segments. So we move that up to number six, and enter. Ramp one is the, uh, the speed you're going to be ramping at for your first segment. We want this to be 139 degrees Celsius. So we hold down this button, until we go way past 139, back a couple of times, then it's all good. Press enter again. This is your target temperature. For this one, it's going to be 566 degrees Celsius. Uh, again, we press and hold. It starts to jump, and it'll jump up in tens and twenties. Uh, eventually, you hold on long enough, and it starts jumping up in hundreds. So that's 566 degrees. Press enter on that, and we want to have a hold time of 30 minutes. Alrighty, ramp 2, same basic deal, 139 degrees Celsius an hour. Our target temperature is going to be 677. Now this firing guide is taken directly from the System96 website. Uh, it's a basic little guide, but it'll work very well for most situations. In hold 2, we want it to hold for 20 minutes. Alright, ramp number 3, we want to ramp at 167 degrees Celsius an hour. After it starts running in tens, you just want to give it a moment before you start pushing down again. Uh, so we'll run back into singles. 167, our final temperature. For this one, we're going to choose to go to about 795 degrees Celsius. And if I was paying more attention, I would have seen that number come up. 795 degrees Celsius, we're going to hold for 15 minutes. It's just a very basic full fuse. Now let's hold for 20 minutes, it's already there. Alright, ramp 4 is going to be our first falling ramp, back down to a kneeling point 1. We want this to go as fast as possible. To do that, you just hold up. Uh, it'll start counting those numbers off very quickly. It'll jump into counting into hundreds any minute now. There it goes. Once it gets up to 99999, the next step is a, uh, a word for full. You can stop at any point before that, it's not going to fall at 9,000 degrees Celsius an hour, but full looks pretty. Our target temperature is going to be 510 degrees Celsius. Funnily enough, that's the annealing point. Again, it was jumping up in tens. Hold off for a second. It'll start counting up in ones again. We press enter, and we're going to hold there for an hour. Right. Our next drop is going to be at 111 degrees Celsius an hour. 
because we feel like we're being very specific. I assume that's a round number in Fahrenheit. So we're probably going all the way down to zero. 100, pause for a moment, it'll start counting in ones. Our target temperature is 427 degrees Celsius. And we're going to hold there just for 10 minutes. Our next ramp is going to be at 167 degrees Celsius. So again, we've got to move this number down a long way. So once it starts counting in hundreds, it's pretty easy. Pause for a moment, it'll start counting in ones again. 166. But we'll be perfectionists. Wait a moment. Touch it up to 167. Our target temperature is going to be about ambient temperature. Uh, it doesn't really matter where it is, but as long as it's somewhere around your temperature, that's fine. And we don't need a hold time on that one. All right, it will now display red one. Once you're at this stage, if you push enter again, the uh, the firing schedule will start. So have any luck? Hold on for a moment, and it'll. Uh, Make a loud tunking noise as our film turns on. Although it's already reasonably hot. There it goes. If you want to stop this, we can press stop. If you'd like to skip this segment, you can press the up arrow. It'll show you what the segment is, and then display skip. Press enter, it'll skip to the next segment. You can then see if we press up again, it says it's ramp 2. We can skip that one. Press up again, we're up to ramp 3. We can skip that one. Uh, and so on and so forth. If we do press enter, it'll flash stop and idle, and that firing schedule is done. If you'd like to kick it off again, enter, it'll display user 1. You can do a review, six segments, first at 139, up until 566, holding for 30, up at 139 to 677, hold for 20, up at 167 to 795, holding for 20, Ramping down at full speed to 510 degrees, holding for an hour. Ramping down at 111 degrees Celsius an hour to 427, holding for 10 minutes. Ramping at 167, down to 35 degrees, holding for none because it's done. It says red one again, press enter. The firing schedule starts off. Alrighty, we'll be back in a minute. Alrighty, so this is the second type of Bartlett controller. It looks identical, but it's got a slightly different uh, firmware on it that allows for cone firing. As you can see, if we press and hold the start, stop, enter button, turn it on, it does nothing. Basically, it puts us straight into running the system. What we need to do on these ones instead is press and hold the down arrow as we turn it on, and it will take us to the edit screen. First option is on. This is where we can choose Fahrenheit or Celsius. Let's go to Celsius. We can also choose Cone Fire or RHD, ram and hold, which is your thermocouple running. And then all your, your little offsets. Don't worry about those little guys. Alrighty, as you can see, now it says that it's uh, 19 degrees instead of 65 degrees, which is uh, putting us into Celsius mode instead of Fahrenheit. You will also notice on these models that when we go to start it, we press enter, and the first step is it asks you for a delay before you fire. With glass, we basically never use delays, so just press enter, takes us to user one. All the same steps apply as the other one. An interesting point about this one, I'll just turn it off, is that I currently don't have a thermocouple connected to this device. What we're doing instead is a thermocouple test. I've just put this one together purely to demonstrate this, so obviously this isn't going to control the kiln at this stage. This little piece of wire here goes in where your thermocouple would usually run, all it does is bridge it, and it uh, senses local temperature only. If you're ever getting thermocouple fails, or if the temperature it's displaying you don't think is quite right, an easy way to test to see whether it's your thermocouple or the actual controller board itself, just pop the wire in and it should give you your current temperature. Or if you want the world's most expensive weather station telling you the current temperature, this would be it. 
Alrighty. Uh, if you've got any other questions, please feel free to get in contact with us at uh, info at glassfusing.com.au and we'll endeavour to answer any of the questions you've got.